Hello and welcome to News Pulse. I'm Naomi Kikon. Now the news in detail. United Nations Industrial Development Organization representative to India is here in Nagaland to assist industrial policy and strategy to develop more industries in Nagaland. Let's have a look at what Rini Van Perkel, representative for India, has to say about entrepreneurial capacity and industrial potentiality in Nagaland. I represent UNIDO, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, and we've been asked by uh, the advisor industry, Mr. In in Imatiba, uh, to uh, assist uh, the state with uh, developing industrial policy and industrial strategy to develop uh, more uh, industries because the state Nagaland does not have much of an industry, but there is uh, quite a lot of potential uh, which the state would like to develop. And we've been requested, as you need to ask the UN agency, uh, to provide advice on the industrial policy and also on the implementation of this. Uh, the uh, CSR and investment conclave was uh, very informative and very interesting. Uh, many initiatives are, are taking place. But of course, there's also a need to scale up the activities and, and make sure that more people, more people from Nagaland can benefit from that. If we look just at uh, the area that UNIDO works as an industrial development organization on manufacturing, we feel that there is an opportunity to, to strengthen the industrial policy and also the ca capacities of government and the capacities of the business sector to work on manufacturing and manufacturing in, 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 in sectors which could then be focused upon sectors where, where there's potential for many people to benefit. So, so not necessarily steel industries or industries cut and paste from what has happened in Maharashtra and Gujarat, but something which is closer to the people of uh, Nagaland. Uh, so maybe some, some industries around uh, uh, honey, beekeeping, bamboo, other industries, food processing, fruits, vegetables, and so on, which could be processed but there's many growers that could benefit if there's greater processing. And then I think a third area where we feel more could be done is on, on creating also opportunities for entrepreneurship. Uh, there's, there's maybe here there's the first generation of entrepreneurs and they need a little bit of hand-holding and support to really create the opportunity that there's a vibrant business community that drives this uh, manufacturing and uh, industrial development. I think that there is, a, and, and of course we have just been uh, two days here, so we can't make a full assessment, but uh, I believe there is, there is a need to, to look at the different sectors where we believe there is uh, trust or uh, development potential growth kernels, and then systematically look at how they can be developed, how, what technical requirements are needed, what uh, quality requirements, and then connect to end markets. And then uh, t uh, take, for example, bamboo. There's a lot of interest to develop large-scale applications for bamboo in, in paper, in, uh, in uh, uh, textile fibers, or for bioenergy. So we need to basically make a, a, con a specific strategy on what is needed in terms of technical infrastructure and the, the technologies, and then connect with the markets, people who can use that, and then develop this uh, together with people who can make it happen. That's ultimately entrepreneurs. And similarly, we, we probably have to do that for uh, uh, fruits and, and uh, as well. So take uh, uh, take the pineapples or so. How can we bring the cold chain close to the to the farmers so that the, the pineapples are, are being preserved in a, in an easy way? And as as new solutions have come forward, also some of the work that Unido has done on cold chain solutions, which can actually come to the farm level and it bring uh, the and or whether it's kiwis or, or other fruits can be taken in there. So we need to, to, to make a little bit of a study and then look at, uh, uh, even though there are good smaller initiatives, how we can make it bigger and how we can connect this to markets in Nagaland, in the Northeast, in India and maybe abroad. Or take if uh, if we look at the furniture sector, we, we could probably look at the, the 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 quality of the furniture, the type of designs which are there, where we could help the artisans to uh, improve the design so that the designs are more attractive to maybe European homes. Uh, so this kind of interventions uh, is specifically the areas that uh, UNIDO can assist with. UNIDO is not a, a funding agency, but we're a technical cooperation agency. So it, it takes technical effort, manufacturing excellence, qualities, craftsmanship to really compete in international markets. 
I was very impressed. We just also saw the national uh, beekeeping and honey mission. I was very impressed with uh, with that, and I think that this is something which can be scaled up. So there is it's, it's relatively low cost investment, and it has now potential for people in the villages to to grow and uh, start uh, beekeeping and 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 start exporting uh, honey because honey is is sought after in the international market. So that would be certainly uh, I think is a is an easy opportunity to start. Uh, uh, investing a bit more in that and grow the, the production of uh, honey and link it to uh, domestic and international markets. So in your observation, you, like you have mentioned earlier, yes. we have resources, we have potentiality. Yes. What are we looking behind? Nathalie, what are we looking behind in Nathalie? As per your observation. I mean, it's very difficult to say that, but I, th I, th I think maybe a little bit of the entrepreneurial spirit might be missing. So, so we, 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 uh, uh, there, there's a tendency to say we, we need to, to get uh, funding or we need to get financing, but ultimately it's a matter of being, uh, being attracting this financing. So we, we have to have the right business propositions and this is maybe a little bit missing still so that there's more emphasis that we should understand that uh, not, not everything is for free and not, nothing doesn't have to be for free it can be good business sense to invest in some of these opportunities but and that comes a little bit back, back to what I f earlier said that, that uh, many of the businesses are first generation entrepreneurs they don't, don't have the parents or all the entrepreneurs to coach them to manage them so there's a need to invest in, in entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs can also be in government because entrepreneurs are people who take identify opportunities and then take some risk and then persevere to make it happen and this this is really needed so people are seeing an opportunity and then you it's it's not going to be easy so you have to have a bit of uh, stamina to make it happen and I, I believe there we could help the people of Nagaland okay. uh, I'm sure you might have you must be traveling around the North States yes so Comparing to uh, Nagaland and comparing to the other states, especially the North states, uh, what is the differences that you have seen so far in terms of industrial and some corporates? Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's very difficult to compare uh, among the siblings of the, the sisters and, and, and Sikkim uh, because of the different culture. I think that what is very vibrant in, in, in uh, Nagaland is the cultural diversity and the, with the tribal communities you have a very rich cultural tradition which you can exploit which is also which, with the Hornbill Festival for example that you see attract this. This is something which which uh, Nagaland can uh, capitalize upon. That's maybe not so much there. I think that maybe uh, yeah, if you compare with Assam they have big industries which are driving a bit of the big development. As you compare to uh, uh, Sikkim, it's more or less a comparable situation, I believe. So, uh, lastly, what message you would like to convey to the people of Thailand? I would like to. I, I would say, don't don't try to copy and paste what others have done, because you will never be as good as somebody who has already done it for a long period of time. So look at inside what is the resources, the richness that Nagaland has, and try to develop products and services around that. And then I think you you have a, a bright future for the state. You have everything grows, everything flowers. It's a rich cultural diversity, rich biodiversity. You can make products and services out of this. And I, th I think that Unida would be interested to, to play a role in trying to identify. I cannot exactly say do this or do that. We, we need to jointly with the people of Nagaland find out what is best. That's all for now. Keep watching on Mail TV.